doing what I do, I'm trying to find riffs and, and musical melodies and things that kind of stick out. And I feel like Kiss Me More is like the perfect loop. It was early one morning, I woke up and I just was going through the beats and this one stuck out to me and I decided to just try to rework it and open the session. I literally brought it to the studio that night and Doja heard it and was like, I love it, I got a song about kissing. I met Doja at an early age, she was 16. I was introduced to an intern at my studio. I heard a demo version of So High that she recorded into her computer. She came through the studio and then uh, eventually her mom came and talked to me. Almost from the first time I, I met Doja, I, I just knew, I was like, man, she, she just has incredible, unique talent and just needs to keep making songs. The track just kind of happened naturally really fast. You know, I added a couple things after uh, we recorded the song with Doja, and it was easy. Oh man, maybe it wasn't easy, but it was. We just have fun when we make music every time. It never feels like we're in a session or there's a pressure to make a hit song. He really liked it when I started playing it and was like, that sounds really dope, let's, let's roll with that. The key word that I gave Roger that day when I was looking for loops or sounds or chord progressions was I was looking for something cute. I think we were trying to make some cute beats. One thing I'm very big on musically is, is phrasing. You know, a solid start, a solid middle, and finish. And I feel like this chord progression, this loop, has a nice complete phrase. We made like a, a version of the beat that is at uh, 95 beats per minute. It was like a slower version. I pretty much knew that it wasn't the right vibe when I played it for Doja like at three separate occasions and she didn't gravitate towards it. Uh, I really loved the chord progression. So as it, we got further along in making the record, I kept thinking about, man, we, we need like another up-tempo song. And I was going through my folder of beats and I was like, man, this one's still really, really good. <laughs> maybe I should speed it up and maybe make it a little like funky or disco-y. So I opened it up and the first thing I did was speed up the tempo uh, to 111. way that it was sped up on Ableton sort of gives it this natural twang a little bit on the guitar. It has a little bit of like just sauce. The second thing I did was add like a four on the floor kick drum, just a basic sound. The next thing I added was a bass. My favorite bass sample is something that I actually sampled from a, a live bass loop. It's like a disco funk bass. I use Simpler in Ableton and I just play it out. It made it sound a little funkier, the bass was brighter and it sounded more like a live instrument. And then we ended up getting some extra stuff on the bass uh, from Carter Lang, my homie. I have a bunch of tracks that are drums, but some of it are layers, you know, kicks and snares and stuff like that. So I'll just try to solo each one of the drums. My friend Jerry, Tis himself, was there when I was making this and he added some drum sounds to it. It really made it thump. I added the wood block. It's from the original session I did with Roger. It's just something I added as an extra um, rhythmic element. Most people don't know there's a little vocal in there, but it's in there. I think I went back and started to add more elements from the original, starting with the wood block, and then I think I put this sound in.
this sound was like a punchy synth sound from the Prophet X that I added after the guitar. I thought the contrast of having like sort of the legato guitar and like the kind of staccato punchy synth made it like a nice just musical contrast that blended together well. For the transitions, I added the slide guitar, which was a Roger sound. On the hook, I decided to play uh, a little Nile Rodgers influenced uh, lead guitar, and you can hear that right here. At the end of the day, it ended up looking like this. Super blessed that Doja liked it and wrote a cool song to it. Here it goes. She's an amazing rapper and a great, amazing singer too. It's cool to work with someone who's just so versatile. Like big shout out to Doja for believing in the song and for the team for standing behind it and to see it, you know, come to the level that I always imagined that it would be at. I ended up working for Dr. Dre in uh, 2014. So, you know, I was like an on-call keyboard player uh, at Aftermath. You know, after that happened, I ended up uh, meeting Drom a few years later and we finished his album at Yeti's old studio and that's when um, Yeti had asked me like hey I'm working with this incredible artist Doja Cat like do you want to come in and and work with us 